Ladies and gentlemen, gather round for an unprecedented cinematic experience. Welcome to the ultimate Five Nights at Freddy's behind the scenes mega compilation. I'm your host, Aiden, the self proclaimed Sultan of Slurp, and I couldn't be more thrilled to take you on this extraordinary journey. In this remastered compilation, we carefully curated all 12 episodes of our behind the scenes series, starting from the mesmerizing pre production phase of the movie all the way up to the jaw dropping release of its first teaser trailer. It's an immersive, comprehensive documentary esque look at the evolution of this highly anticipated Five Nights movie. Throughout this compilation, we've revisited and revitalized our earlier episodes to ensure that only the most accurate and up-to-date news stories are included. Our aim is to provide you with a concise and seamless way to follow the full pre-production and main production of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. From behind-the-scenes interviews with the creative minds behind the film to exclusive glimpses of concept art and set designs, we've left no stone unturned in our quest to bring you the most engaging and informative content. Whether you're a diehard fan eagerly anticipating the movie's release or a newcomer curious about the fascinating world of Five Nights at Freddy's, this compilation is the perfect way to delve deep into the process of bringing this beloved franchise to life on the big screen. So, grab your favorite snack, dim the lights, and prepare to embark on an unforgettable journey. I'm excited about Five Nights at Freddy's, but I'm really excited about that. I've been working with Scott Cawthorn on, on trying to turn that into a movie. I'm really, really, really pleased about that. That game has a rabid fan base, and I would say without Scott, it wouldn't make a good movie. But I think Scott has a very clear idea of what he wants the movie to be. Because we're using the same creator as the game in Scott, I think there'll be a great movie in it. And I think if it weren't for that, I'd be skeptical about a Five Nights movie. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie is currently being produced using the working title Bad Cupcake. It is worth noting that the working title has very little or nothing to do with the plot. The leak gives us our first look at the construction of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. This location will likely become one of the single most iconic and important spots in the movie. That's not the only behind-the-scenes leak we've got that spotlights Freddy Fazbear. In a since-deleted post, the company that was working on the pizzeria's board leaked the sign that would be appearing in the movie. Produced by Signworks LLC, the behind-the-scenes video truly shows the work that went into creating this beautiful sign. We are definitely getting massive Chuck E. Cheese vibes here. One thing that is particularly noteworthy is the fact that Freddy is depicted wearing gloves in this sign, which would be a new aesthetical choice for the character. But honestly, we are not opposed to it. It definitely cements Freddy alongside other childhood icons like Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny. Away from the sets and locations, we've also had a raj of casting announcements for the FNF movie. Matthew Lillard, who has starred in everything from Scooby-Doo to Twin Peaks, is confirmed to appear in the feature. Lillard is confirmed to be playing William Afton, who serves as the main antagonist of the franchise. Afton also somehow manages to constantly cheat death and come back over and over again. Elsewhere, Josh Hutcherson, known for his role in The Hunger Games, has been cast in a leading role. Hutcherson will play Mike Schmidt, the security guard who serves as the playable character in Five Nights at Freddy's. While casting for the movie, Blumhouse provided a detailed description of the character and his connection to the movie's overall plot. Riddled with guilt over a tragedy in his past and now struggling to take care of his younger sister on his own, Mike is low on options when he lands a new job to pay the bills, the night security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Mike is vulnerable with a tough exterior. Though he means well, his obsession with digging for the truth may have potentially disastrous consequences. The other notable casting name is Grant Feely, who seems to be having a ton of fun on the set of the movie. The Obi-Wan star, last seen playing little Luke Skywalker, has been cast in a supporting role. While unconfirmed, fans have heavily speculated that he will be playing Threats, one of the missing children who are kidnapped from Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. David Huston has also posted a picture at Instagram that depicts the rest of his young supporting cast. It's heavily speculated that all of these children will play missing children whose souls eventually become intertwined with the animatronic crew. Let's start our behind-the-scenes coverage with an update regarding Freddy's Fazbear's Pizza Place. And now we've been given our first look at the completed pizzeria. These images come courtesy of our source who will remain anonymous. The images give us our first real look at the practical version of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, even if it's only the front of the store. We can see from these images that the store is in fact backless. The set is in Louisiana and was built on the lot of an old hospital that was destroyed during Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Our sources explain that security has been tightening on the production. They said, security is starting to get a little testy. There are a few people who have been trying to stop for photos, but security doesn't like anyone sitting around nearby. 
They went on to say they have state police and police security cameras set up around the area. It looks like Blumhouse is doing all it can to deter leaks and set photos, but alas, when producing such an anticipated movie, these kinds of leaks are inevitable. Elsewhere, we got our first look at movie star Josh Hutcherson in action. The video that surfaced shows Hutcherson filming a fight scene in a mall's water fountain. It's unclear what set Mike off in this situation, but if we had to speculate, we'd guess that someone brought up the bite of 83 while he was working, which causes Mike to flip. Perhaps then he gets fired and finds a job at Freddy's. But that's just a theory. You know the rest. Before we give you your first look at the animatronic Freddy that will be used in the movie, we want to briefly touch on some new casting news. It was announced this week that Christian Stokes will be joining the cast of the FNF movie. According to NBB, Stokes' character will be called Hank. Hank is a nickname for Henry, so there is some speculation that he'll be playing that character in the movie. But at the moment, that is just speculation. This week's biggest behind-the-scenes leak has to be the reveal of one of the animatronic costumes. The admittedly blurry image gives us our first look at none other than Freddy Fazbear himself. The animatronic mascot can be seen alongside crew members outside of the pizza place set. The first takeaway is that the animatronic won't have gloves like previously depicted on the sign of pizza place. Secondly and strangely, the scene being filmed appears to be both outside and at nighttime, which could suggest that the animatronics are uncharacteristically going to leave the pizzeria at some point in the movie. After all, we have to remember that the set itself is a hollow facade. If the filmmakers brought the animatronic here, it is definitely for exterior shots. Of course, there is always the possibility that the team has Freddy on location for some press and marketing materials, such as a teaser poster. Let's start this week's behind-the-scenes coverage with an update regarding the FNF movie's age rating. For what feels like years, Five Nights at Freddy's fans have discussed, debated, and generally weighed in with their opinion on what age rating certificate Blumhouse should aim for with the FNF movie. A large section of the fandom is dead set on an R rating, as they feel the movie must include excess blood and gore to truly represent the dark and twisted horror franchise. Whereas others have argued that an R rating would alienate a large portion of the fandom under the age of 18. Early this week, newly cast actor Michael P. Sullivan was asked by a fan whether or not the film would be rated R. He replied by saying, Not sure yet, but I think so. This certainly isn't the concrete confirmation many fans will be looking for. Nevertheless, it certainly is a feather for that side of the Phantom's hat. For those who are unfamiliar or even new to the FNF community, Markiplier's influence on the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise cannot be understated. Mark is sometimes referred to by his self-stylized title as the King of Five Nights at Freddy's by his and the game's fanbase due to his perseverance and strive to 100% each title in the main series. You could quite easily suggest that this franchise wouldn't be as big as it is today without Markiplier's gameplay videos. This week, Markiplier sat down with Variety to discuss his current and upcoming projects. When asked about his possible participation in the FNF movie, Markiplier had a bit of a confusing reply, everyone wants to know, there was a lot of confusion. Yeah, I can't say anything particular about that. There was a lot of scheduling conflict, and I can't say anything. Before we get to our biggest news story of the week, we wanted to bring you up to speed with all of the latest casting announcements for the movie. Spoiler alert, there has been a lot. First up, we have the previously mentioned Michael P. Sullivan. He confirmed his involvement in the project through a Facebook post. He also confirmed that his character is completely original and does not appear anywhere else in the franchise. Next up, we have the casting of actress Bailey Winston, who has been cast as a character known as Kim. This seems to be an original character created for the movie. We then have Tadasa Young, who is set to play Dr. Lillian. This casting pairs nicely with another casting announcement. We knew that Victoria Paytonon had been cast as a social worker in the movie. It's certainly interesting that we now have two confirmed characters that work in the medical slash well-being department. We also got news that Jimmy Basford is joining the cast. He also leaked some information about his role responding to a Facebook fan message writing. Yes, I'm paired with a lady. In brackets, wife. And are in the chase slash water fight scene a lot. This water flight scene is likely a reference to the leaked Josh Hutcherson scene we spotlighted in the last episode of our behind-the-scenes coverage. If you want to go back and check out that video, there will be a link in the description of this video. Rounding up this absolutely massive week of casting announcements is an open casting call for the role of young Vanessa. We already know that actress Elizabeth Lale will be playing the adult version of this role. There is some speculation that this could be Vanessa, also known as Vanny. It's time to round up our behind-the-scenes coverage with the biggest news story of this week. 
This week, someone was touring the Jim Henson Creature Shop and sapped a picture from their visit and uploaded it to Instagram in a now-deleted post. Five Nights at Freddy's fans were quick to notice a fan-favorite animatronic hidden in one of the posts. There is some debate amongst fans whether this is straight-up Springtrap or simply withered Spring Bonnie. Let's start this week's coverage with news with a surprising turn of events. YouTubers Daco, 8-Bit Ryan, Rezboski, and Basim Alam were invited by Scott Cawthon to visit the set of the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's film. Fans of the franchise were excited to see what behind-the-scenes content the YouTubers would bring back. The YouTubers all met Scott Cawthon on the set of the Five Nights at Freddy's film and shared pictures of their visit on social media. Daco had this to say about his experience. The FNF movie set is beyond incredible and something that I'll never forget. The whole cast, crew, the Jim Henson Company, and Scott have put so much love and passion into this movie. It's truly amazing. In addition to their visit, the YouTubers also revealed a surprise for fans, the return of the iconic Freddy's Pizza sign. Elsewhere, actress Kat Connor Sterling, who will be playing the character Max in the FNF movie, has given fans their first look at the script for the movie. While this might not sound interesting at first, the script actually reveals the official title of the movie. Thanks to actress Sterling, we now know the official title of the movie is. Drum roll, please. Five Nights at Freddy's. While this may not seem like big news at first, fans have been eagerly anticipating the reveal of the official title for months. Before this announcement, there has been some debate and speculation amongst fans as the FNF movie has been going under the working title Bad Cupcake. For those who may not know, a working title is a temporary title given to a project that is subject to change before its official release. Let's finish in with the biggest news story of the week. According to recent speculation, it seems that the infamous Bite of 83 will be featured in the upcoming FNF movie. Actor Wyatt Parker, who is rumored to be playing young Mike Schmidt, portrayed by Josh Hutcherson, recently uploaded a story on his Instagram with the comment, Nice to see my little brother again. As the actors are not related, this comment seems to confirm the theory that Parker is playing young Mike and that Garrett is his younger brother, also known as the crying child. This news has excited FNAF fans who have been eagerly waiting for any news on the movie's storyline. While we still don't know exactly how the Bite of 83 will be portrayed in the movie, this speculation has only increased the hype and anticipation for the movie's release. Let's start this week's coverage by getting the elephant in the room out of the way after years of development. We can't believe we are actually saying this. We have got our first look at the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. We still can't believe this movie is actually a reality, but here it is. We are looking at our first official image from the movie. This is genuinely such a hype day for Fana fans everywhere. We have an official release date for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie after years of waiting. Fans will finally be able to watch the movie on October 27th, 2023. In 205 days, we are all going to be able to experience this, and we could honestly cry. That wasn't the only release date information we got. In a surprising turn of events, the movie will also release day and date on Peacock, Universal's streaming service. We hate to sour what is such an exciting day for fan of fans, but we have to mention that we are somewhat scared about this release strategy. A simultaneous theatrical and peacock in some ways does seem to show a lack of confidence from Universal in the product. Alternatively, it could just be Universal using FNAF to promote its streaming service. We here at Slurp are just scared that this will diminish the box office returns and affect the potential sequels. Hopefully we are just overreacting, but we definitely hope the decision for the simultaneous release is addressed by one of the producers or directors. Until then, we are wishing the editing team all the best. While some fans were excited about the dual release, others were disappointed and even worried about the impact it could have on the movie's box office performance. The brain trust over at NBC Universal has made the confoundly stupid decision to hamstring this movie in advance, and they're going to release it day and date in theaters and on Peacock at the same time. Um, which they have tried this experiment before, and it's proven that it doesn't work, but I guess they've decided they wanted to try it again. Blumhouse, the studio behind the movie, responded to the backlash with a statement. It reads as follows. Like our Halloween movies, The Five Nights at Freddy's movie will premiere in theaters and on the Universal Comcast streaming platform Peacock at the same time. Universal and Comcast believe that because the Phantom Scott has built over the last decade is so varied and intense, a simultaneous release is the best way to turn the Five Nights at Freddy's movie into a huge cultural event. Anyone looking for that communal experience can see the film in theaters. Superfans can rewatch it on Peacock and catch all the Easter eggs. 
The way consumers will experience the marketing campaign is that they'll be directed to theaters first and only later to Peacock. It is very rare to have an opportunity with a big corporate entity like Comcast, where they have a huge vested interest in making as many people aware of the movie as possible. This bodes well not just for this film, but for any potential subsequent Five Nights films. This week, we got a massive treat for the FNF fandom, our first look inside Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place. For those who don't know, this location is a crucial part of the FNF lore, as it is the location where the first game took place. The exclusive leak comes from Cupcake Malvado, who shared an image of the interior of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place on Twitter. The image shows some arcades, children's drawings, and posters, all the things you'd expect to find in a family-friendly pizzeria. But what's really exciting is that we use AI to enhance the image, revealing even more details about the environment. Of course, with any leak like this, there's bound to be some speculation and debate among fans. Some have suggested that this might not even be Freddy's Fazbear's Pizza Place, but rather Fredbear's Family Diner, the location of the iconic Bite of 83 event. Fans have compared things like the carpet in the leaked image to other FNF games and merchandise, trying to piece together the location. As we previously reported, it looks likely that the Bite of 83 will take place within the movie. However, the original leaker does seem to indicate that this is indeed Freddy's Pizzeria. We'll leave the speculation up to the audience and see how it all plays out when the movie hits theaters and Peacock on October 27, 2023. A logo reveal and a huge character confirmation in one single TikTok leak? Buckle up, because this next story is a doozy. Actress Kat Connor Sterling, who will play Max in the movie, recently posted a TikTok showing off some Five Nights at Freddy's themed cups that she received as a gift from Blumhouse to celebrate the completion of filming. It's safe to say that these cups will most likely be merch in the future. But what really caught our attention was the paper that came with the gift. It reads, Thanks to you, this cast and crew will make the world believe that a bear can sing, a cupcake can bite, and a spring block can sting. For that and more, we raise a glass to you. This confirms what longtime viewers of our BTS series already know, Springlock has been long rumored to appear in the movie. But this reference seems to confirm it even more. And who knows, maybe those cups will become merch for FNAF fans in the near future. The casting news just doesn't seem to want to slow down and this week's announcement is one of the biggest yet. We must warn you that this news comes with a major spoiler alert. It has officially been revealed that Dylan Horner will be voicing Balloon Boy in the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie. We've got a big one for you to end this week's episode of Behind the Scenes News. A two and a half minute leaked video from a costume employee on the set of the FNF movie. The video starts off with possible new renders of the characters, including Golden Freddy alongside the main cast. This only further confirms his involvement in the movie and has fans excited to see how he'll fit into the story. But that's not all. Later in the video, we see some concept art that's clearly based on the movie, featuring the same Pizza Place logo we've seen in past behind the scenes leaks. However, we can't confirm whether this art is official or just a crew member's personal project. It looks like it's been colored in with crayons, which could indicate it's just for fun. The rest of the video doesn't show much of the set except for some behind-the-scenes storage. But it's still exciting to get a glimpse of what's going on behind the scenes, even if we probably shouldn't be seeing it. Starting off the behind-the-scenes news video is some exciting news from the leaker Cult of Ember, known for their spot-on leaks on upcoming Marvel movies. This leaker has a proven track record of accurately leaking information for upcoming Marvel movies including concept art and behind-the-scenes photos for Spider-Man No Way Home. But let's focus on what they've shared about the FNF movie this week. Firstly, it's been revealed that the movie won't just take place in the 80s as previously speculated. Instead, only flashbacks will take place during that time period. Most of the movie will actually take place after the restaurant has already become run down. In addition, Cult of Ember has revealed that Raphael Luce will appear in the film, likely in a commercial. Raphael's appearance will be in a training video for the restaurant that's shown during a flashback. The video features a woman explaining how to operate the animatronic suits. We emphasize that we only see the animatronics in good condition during flashbacks. Speaking of which, the leaker also shared that the animatronics in the movie are one-to-one -one recreations. These leaks are definitely exciting for fans of the FNAF franchise. They give us a better idea of what to expect from the movie, and it seems like the filmmakers are staying true to the source material. The fact that the animatronics are one-to-one -one recreations, for example, should please fans who have been waiting for a faithful adaptation. We want to thank Cult of Ember for their continued reporting and for keeping the hype alive for FNAF fans everywhere. If you're not already following them, be sure to give them a follow on Twitter and let them know Slurp sent you. The FNAF community is absolutely buzzing with excitement over this next news story. 
boys, girls, and non-binary pals the bite of 83 is happening. To recap, actor Wyatt Parker, who was previously cast and rumored to be playing young Mike Schmidt in the Fenef movie, posted on his Instagram story with a comment, nice to see my little brother again, indicating that his character is related to Garrett, also known as the crying child. For those new to the Fenef world, the Bite of 83 refers to an event where an animatronic bites a child named the crying child, resulting in severe injuries and has been a significant part of Fenef lore. After weeks of speculation, we finally have confirmation that Wyatt Parker has been cast as young Mike in the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie. While that seals the deal, we're definitely getting the bite of 83 in this movie. Given Mike's description of feeling regret for a tragedy in his past and the fact that Garrett is likely the crying child, it seems almost certain that the bite of 83 will be a significant part of the movie's plot. It would be surprising at this point if the movie didn't include this pivotal event in the Fenef lore. It's clear that Mike is working through the trauma of this past event in the present events of the film. We can't wait to see how this pivotal moment in Fenef lore will be portrayed on the big screen and how it will tie into the overall story of the movie. This next news item might not be the most exciting one, but it's always great to see behind-the-scenes content from upcoming films. This week, an official image was released of director Emma Tammy and producer Christopher H. Warner on the set of the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's film, which is set to release on October 27, 2023. While the image itself may not reveal anything too noteworthy, it's still exciting to see the cast and crew working on the movie. We love getting these glimpses of the filmmaking process and only adds to our anticipation for the final product. Our final news story of the week is one we have been reporting on for a few weeks now. Markiplier has added further fuel to the fire in regards to his role in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Markiplier rose to fame through his popular YouTube channel, which features him playing horror games like Fenef, gaining the title King of Five Nights at Freddy's. As a result, fans are speculating whether or not he will have a role in the upcoming movie. In a March 2023 interview with Variety, Markiplier revealed that he can't discuss his role in the film due to scheduling conflicts. It's possible that these conflicts could be related to a movie project of his own that he had mentioned in a video around the same time. In a recent stream, Markiplier spoke about a number of subjects, first and foremost being the movie he's been working on. While he hasn't mentioned a lot about it, fans have asked whether it's in relation to the Five Nights at Freddy's adaptation. The YouTuber says at around the 940 mark that his own project is in no way related to the survival horror series. However, later on in the video at around the 30 minute mark, he insists, while looking straight into the camera, that he doesn't know anything about FNAF movie. Don't know anything about the FNAF movie. Don't ask me anything about the FNAF movie. My God, the things that I could definitely not tell you about the FNAF movie that I definitely don't know about. Wink. I don't know anything. Or do I? Question. Markiplier's tone and delivery were quite humorous and cheeky, leading some to believe that he may, in fact, know something. But without any confirmation, it's all just speculation. While there is no definitive answer to whether or not Markiplier will appear in the Fenef movie, his involvement would certainly excite fans of the game and the U2 star. We'll have to wait and see if any further information comes to light. Get ready, FNAF fans, because Universal is finally giving us a taste of what's to come. The studio has been busy setting up official pages for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie on our social media and website channels. And while most of these pages are still featuring placeholder text cards, there was one brand new image that was spotted by some eagle-eyed fans. But before we show you the image, we have to issue a huge spoiler warning. If you're a major fan of the franchise, we recommend that you sit down for this one. Are you ready? Okay, here it is. It's the walls of Freddy's Pizza Place. That's right, folks, the walls are officially confirmed for the movie. It might not be the most exciting reveal, but all of this activity across the official channels does seem to indicate that the marketing campaign is ready to start heating up. Our final news story of the week is sure to put a smile on the faces of all Five Nights at Freddy's fans. We've got our hands on an updated plotline for the movie, and it sounds like it's going to be amazing. According to Collider, a very trustworthy movie news source, the upcoming supernatural horror story has assembled quite an impressive cast for itself, including performances from Matthew Lillard and Josh Hutcherson. Lillard will be in charge of playing William Afton, the violent serial killer who abducts and murders children while dressed in a golden bunny suit. The disappearance of the kids leaves a haunted legacy for the pizza place, but the story isn't quite over. A security guard, played by Hutcherson, will start working the night shift at the establishment and he'll soon discover that not everything is as it seems at Freddy's. 
The animatronics that sing and dance for visitors during the day display bizarre behavior after dark, setting the stage for the central mystery around the story. As a FNAF fan, this plotline makes us so pleased since it doesn't seem to stray far from the beloved source material. It also seems to do a good job of summarizing multiple elements from multiple games into one plot without needing to cram too much lore into one singular movie. But wait, the plot details don't end there. We just had to do a last minute or rewrite to fit this one in this week's BTS video. 3C Films is becoming quite the star in this week's behind the scene coverage as he has just shared another absolutely huge leak with the Five Nights at Freddy's community. In his video titled Five Nights at Freddy's Movie In Depth Plot Found, they have some new information to share that was found through a movie survey app called Dave. The survey included a plot synopsis of the movie that was written by Blumhouse to give an idea of the movie structure without giving away spoilers. From producer Jason Blum and based on the acclaimed video game series of the same name, in this supernatural horror film, Mike Schmidt played by Josh Hutcherson is a troubled security guard who starts a seemingly easy overnight gig at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, the local family entertainment center. Struggling to take care of his 10-year-old sister Abby on his own, the generally undependable Mike is low on options when he lands this new job to pay the bills and brings her along to the gig. Mike quickly realizes, however, that the night shift at Freddy's won't be as kickback as he was thinking after he makes a disturbing discovery that the pizza place's four horrifying animatronic mascots all apparently come alive, moving about on their own as they hunt down and attempt to kill anyone that is still at Freddy's after midnight. Now Mike and Abby must do everything they can to keep themselves alive through the night. But after a local police officer, Vanessa Monroe, arrives and quickly finds herself thrust in the middle of this terrifying situation, she is able to shed some light on the dark history and inner workings of Fazbear Entertainment and its nefarious co-founder William Aft. This is insane. Based on the synopsis we just got, it looks like we're going to be in for a wild ride. Not only do we get to follow the story of Mike Schmidt, but we also get to see his 10-year-old sister Abby join him in the nightmare at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. We are especially curious about how they'll portray the rundown pizzeria and a relationship between Abby and Freddy Fazbear, as seen in the first official picture. Will the movie stick faithfully to the games and follow a five-night format, or will it all take place in one terrifying night? We want to give a big shout-out to 3C Films for sharing this news. Thank you so much for keeping us updated on all things Five Nights at Freddy's. We are beyond hype for this movie and can't wait to see how it all plays out on the big screen. It's time to switch gears and talk about a story that has taken the FNF community by surprise. This week, we received some major casting news with two of the main animatronics in the movie being recast. The first recast is for the voice of Golden Freddy with Jade Hassan taking over the role. It remains to be seen what direction Hassan will take with the character, but we're excited to see what he brings to the table. The second recast is for the character of Bonnie with Jade Kinder Martin taking over from John Sanford Moore. This news has left many fans wondering why the sudden recasts. Were there creative differences? Or did the previous actors have scheduling conflicts? Unfortunately, we don't have any official statements from the production team yet. It's also worth noting that recasting is not uncommon in the movie industry. Sometimes, actors may not be the right fit for the role or their schedules may change unexpectedly. In any case, we'll have to wait and see how the new actors bring these characters to life on the big screen. Regardless, we're sure that the filmmakers have made these decisions with the best interests of the movie in mind. We're looking forward to seeing how these changes play out on the big screen. This next story is a real treat for Five Nights at Freddy's fans. Blumhouse has released a brand new official image from the movie's marketing campaign, and it's causing quite a stir. In fact, we nearly missed it ourselves when we saw it floating around in our Discord server, thinking it was just a fan creation. But upon checking the official Blumhouse Instagram account, we can confirm that it is indeed official. The image is a split screen promoting two of Blumhouse's franchises with movies in the pipeline, Five Nights at Freddy's and The Exorcist. On the left-hand side of the image, we see a party table with party hands on top and a cutout paper people chain hanging over it. In the distance, we see darkness with two red glowing eyes. We tried to put this image through a number of AI tools to lighten the image but none gave us good results, so we still can't work out who these eyes belong to. In all honesty, the image almost feels like a fan-made image or something made by an enthusiastic marketing intern, rather than an official piece of marketing material for a highly anticipated film. It is possible that a social media manager pieced together the image using concept art and assets from the movie's production. It's worth noting that the FNF logo in the image is in a different style and font yet again, making this the third different variation we've seen for the movie's official title. 
The image was shared with the caption ready for a bloodbath. Which might just be another point for those fans fighting for an R rating for the movie. Fans of our behind the scenes series may remember that this announcement was met with some backlash. Many felt that a simultaneous release indicated a lack of faith in the project from Blumhouse while others were concerned that it could negatively impact the movie's box office performance and, in turn, harm the chances for planned sequels. The backlash was significant enough that Blumhouse felt compelled to address it publicly. At the time, some remained skeptical about the sincerity of Blumhouse's response. However, it seems the studio is now doubling down on their approach as evidenced by a recent interview with Bloomberg, a highly respected global business and financial news provider featuring Blumhouse's president of Hi J Prakash. While the interview did reveal much about Five Nights at Freddy's specifically, there were a few notable comments from Prakash that caught our attention. Let's take a listen to the clip. Uh, for sure, the theatrical release model <clears throat> is in an incredible way to generate cultural impact and value. Uh, I think we've seen through the course of the way we've released movies that having that sequential um, windows for consumers to, to engage with it works incredibly well, but there are some projects, you know, we have one coming up later this year, Five Nights at Freddy's, that's actually going to be debuting theatrically and in the home at the same time, and you've got a very unique fan base there that's engaged with that property historically, you know, at home via, via games, and so we really tailor the release for what works best for the project. Uh, it yeah. is, I think you're absolutely right, yeah. right? Mario, Super Mario Bros. is the yeah. example of that. Yeah, we have one uh, where we're adapting the Five Nights at Freddy's, mm -hmm. uh, very successful game into a movie later this year. Mm -hmm. We're working on another development project that falls in that category too. So even though we're not uh, as a primary focus in our games division taking IP that exists and and turning into games. We do think that's a possibility with the games that we do, that if they are successful, we can adapt them into film and TV. Frankly, it's one of the unique aspects that we bring to the table as a games publisher. Fans may be somewhat relieved to hear that the simultaneous theatrical and streaming release is not a sign of a lack of faith in the project, but rather a carefully considered approach designed to give fans the most opportunities to experience the film in the way that works best for them. If you are someone who is worried about the simultaneous release, does this your interview do anything to calm those nerves? Before we get to our huge announcement, the biggest news of the week undoubtedly goes to a shocking casting announcement from the highly reputable Johnny Blocks. This week, we learned that Garrett Hines, a talented actor, has been cast as Mike's dad in Blumhouse's upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie. For those who are unfamiliar with the Five Nights at Freddy's lore, Michael Schmidt is the son of William Afton. We already know that Josh Hutcherson will be playing Mike Schmidt in the movie adaptation, and the legendary actor Matthew Lillard will be playing William Afton. This casting decision suggests that the filmmakers are taking the story in a different direction. Fans of the franchise are undoubtedly wondering what this means for the storyline. Some theorists have suggested that Garrett Hines' character may actually be a stepfather rather than a biological one, which would explain why Michael's last name is different from his father's. In our opinion, if this is the direction that the filmmakers are taking, it feels like a predictable plot twist. It comes across as safe and reeks Luke, I am your father energy. However, we are still open to having our minds changed as more information is revealed. Believe it or not, the moment we've been anticipating for nearly a decade has finally arrived. Yes, we're talking about the first teaser poster and trailer for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. It's an occasion of such magnitude that we can hardly contain our excitement. Before we get into the trailer, let's take a moment to recap what the first poster actually revealed. Fans of this beloved series have been eagerly anticipating an official poster or trailer, and it seems like our prayers have been answered. Jason Blum, the mastermind behind Blumhouse, has finally unleashed the first poster upon us, and it's beyond anything we could have imagined. Let's talk about this poster, shall we? It features the franchise's four most iconic animatronic characters, each getting their moment in the spotlight. Freddy takes center stage, exuding an eerie aura that sends shivers down our spines. Bonnie, sporting full-on guitar strap, stands proudly by Freddy's side. Chica, clutching Mr. Cupcake, showcases her playful yet unsettling presence. And of course, we can't forget fan-favorite Foxy, who brings that touch of mischievous charm. It's a sight to behold, my friends. Honestly, it still feels surreal to see this poster and know that the movie is actually happening. But wait, there's more. In addition to the main poster, we were blessed with individual character posters, each highlighting the unique essence of these animatronic wonders. The attention to detail is mind-boggling, fueling our confidence in the final product. We can't help but feel a surge of excitement knowing that the movie will do justice to these beloved characters. And let's not forget the official logo for the movie, 
a subject of much speculation and debate for months. Blumhouse has truly outdone themselves with a bold, worn-out font that bears a striking resemblance to a fast-food chain restaurant. It's a perfect fit for the movie's theme and a much-needed upgrade from the old Five Nights logo, which was starting to show its age. Bravo, Blumhouse! Now we're guessing if you're watching this video, you've probably seen countless breakdowns and speculation videos about the teaser trailer. We've even thrown our own into the mix. But that's not really what we're here to dive into today. No, we're here to talk about the controversy that's been firing up around the trailer itself. The trailer dropped and boy, did it get a reaction. Lots of views, mostly positive vibes, but one particular thing did stick out like a sore thumb to many diehard fans. Yep, we're talking about the red eyes on the animatronics. In the trailer, these bad boys' eyes glow red when they're active at night, a pretty obvious nod to their evil intent, right? Well, that's not gone down too well in the Five Nights at Freddy's community. Over on Reddit, one of the top threads is all about those glowing red eyes. And sorry to say, folks, the consensus is far from positive. Our friend Bioshocker101 called them goofy and reckons they detract from the overall creep factor. They also pointed out that the menacing squint we see at the end of the trailer just doesn't work, makes them less deadpan, and yep, you guessed it, less creepy. People had even started comparing the red eye debate to the Sonic trailer controversy and the Chris Pratt Mario casting saga. Here, behind the scenes, we reckon it's somewhere in between the two. Sure, Sonic's original design was, let's face it, a disaster and would have tanked the movie. But these red eyes, while unexpected, don't seem like they'll massively impact the final film. We want to point you to a comment made by our pal Connor. But it, it could, they could do it, and they could do it really well. Well, that's why I keep, I keep going back to like Gremlins, because, you know, there's, for the real, towards the end, that they sort of start taking liberties then, and start, you know, the gore and the blood and things breaks down and mm -hmm. so if you could do it in that sort of style we agree maybe it's time we accept that this is going to be a throwback horror flick in the vein of the 80s horror classics a cheesy fun ride and honestly five nights might just be the perfect project to revive this genre Just when we thought the team at Blumhouse has already satiated our five nights at Freddy's appetite for a bit, lo and behold, another morsel hits the web barely a day after the last one. This new image teases a different perspective of a sequence we've already glimpsed in the trailer, featuring none other than Josh Hutcherson's Mike, seemingly stuck in some sort of mechanized, saw-wielding trap. Naturally, this has sent the fanbase into overdrive with speculation over what exactly is happening in this sequence. Some fans are floating the idea that this could be a dream sequence, Imagine Mike dozing off on his first night on the job, only to wake up in a terror-induced cold sweat, picturing a relentless metal blade inching closer to his face. On the other hand, others think that this could be a nod to the infamous Springlock soups of the franchise. If that's what getting stuffed into a soup looks like in this cinematic universe, then wow, that's one brutal interpretation and we're all here for it. But until we have a full trailer or some more clues, all we can do is hypothesize. So. Make sure you join the discussion in the comments section below. But wait, there's more. This week also graced us with another behind-the-scenes image, offering a clearer look at an animatronic that was somewhat hidden in the teaser trailer. Yes, we're talking about the goat, the one and only Chica. The image in question shows an unidentified person standing next to the animatronic heads of Chica, Bonnie, and Freddy, all marvelously crafted by Jim Henson's Creature Shop. Though Freddy and Bonnie are a bit hard to discern, Chica is clearly visible. And let me tell you, she looks straight up phenomenal, like she's been ripped straight from the video game. And our final sneak peek for this session comes courtesy of YouTuber Dolly Dashend. Our longtime viewers will remember her as the creator who previously revealed her involvement in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Well, now that the marketing campaign is rolling out, she's slowly but surely sharing more about her time on set. Her latest share. This fresh look inside Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, straight from her video that also unpacks a few other intriguing BTS tidbits about the set. Pika, like, stained glass thing right here, same picture as there. And if you look right here, that's where I was sitting! Everything was connected, where the employees made the pizza, to where we were sitting, to where the stage was, to even the ball pit, you could just go right there. In fact, that's where the ball pit was, way down there. As always, we're hugely grateful to Dolly Dashen for these tantalizing glimpses behind the curtain. We highly recommend checking out our channel for more insider scoops. Here's a piece of news that will certainly electrify the true Five Nights enthusiasts among you. Brace yourselves. A novel adaptation of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie has been discovered on Book Manager, scheduled for release on December 5th, 
2023. Now, that's notably later than the film's October release, which could be a strategic move to curtail spoilers and keep the spotlight firmly on the movie itself. For those die-hard Star Wars fans who endured the Disney sequels, you know that movie novelizations can often fill out the story, giving us more depth in terms of plot and character development. And let's be honest here. Sometimes the novel can even outshine the movie it's based on. So, it probably won't come as a shock when we say that we'll be pre-ordering, purchasing, and pouring over this book. We're confident it will become an indispensable reference for the Five Nights fandom, something akin to a Five Nights Bible, if you will. And there you have it, Slurp Heads. The thrilling conclusion of our Five Nights at Freddy's behind-the-scenes mega compilation. From pre-production to the movie's first teaser trailer, we've explored every step of this cinematic adventure. Throughout this journey, we've witnessed the dedication, creativity, and passion that brought the world of Five Nights at Freddy's to life on the big screen. We're grateful for your support and enthusiasm, which have inspired us to bring you engaging and informative content. Thank you for joining us on this incredible ride. Your love for Five Nights at Freddy's has motivated us to dig deeper, uncover secrets, and share the excitement with you. As the movie's release draws nearer, stay subscribed for more updates, trailers, and news. Join our Discord community to connect with fellow fans, discuss theories, and stay engaged. We appreciate your support and look forward to the upcoming release of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Thank you for being part of this amazing journey. Stay curious and true to the spirit of Five Nights at Freddy's. Until next time, this is Aiden signing off.